This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Towns Van Zandt was a songwriter and a traveling minstrel, a folk singer no less, in an era when practicing these crafts had long since become anachronistic, evocative of a long-gone era in American life, of Jimmy Rogers riding the rails of the great American West, Woody Guthrie tramping the highways from Dust Bowl, Oklahoma to the migrant camps of California, Robert Johnson playing guitar with the devil at a Mississippi Delta crossroads. Hank Williams driving from roadhouse to roadhouse across the South, drinking and singing with the drifting cowboys. An archaic art form, a mythic mode of living, but like these other American originals, Towns Van Zandt was fully invested in his craft. And his craft was inextricable from his life, and this investment and integration gave rise to great art, which is timeless. As an artist, Van Zant made no compromises. He lived out his destiny on the road, practicing his craft until he simply couldn't anymore. The embodiment of the troubled troubadour. He was certainly a troubled man. Towns Van Zant was troubled throughout his life by alcoholism and manic depressive illness, and he was constantly battling the demons associated with these conditions. He made attempts to settle down into family life, but it was always a struggle. He made attempts to pursue commercial success with his music, but mostly those attempts came up short. He had a spiritual bent that always trumped his material concerns, and for better or worse, those of his family. He said he lived for the hum of the wheels, and in hope of hitting that one note that would connect with just one person and save that person's life. He was deeply serious about this goal, which he believed without question was his life's calling, to the extent that he blew off everything to pursue it, refusing to compromise. In an interview published October 17, 2002, in the Houston Press, his oldest son, J.T., succinctly summed up his view of the price they both paid for his father's single-minded pursuit of that goal. As a father, he had a lot of unforgivable shortcomings that can't be excused by his music. The lack of compromise that made family life impossible for Van Zant made his music possible. For 30 years, he wrote beautiful, deeply inspired, brilliantly integrated lyrical and musical evocations of his inner life. He gave sometimes magical performances in his engaging, insouciant Texas folk blues style for what must always be described as a cult audience, even though a couple of his songs reached the commercial heights. If I Needed You was a number three record for Emmylou Harris and Don Williams in 1981, and Poncho and Lefty was number one on the country charts for Willie Nelson and Merle Haggard in 1983. But Towns never got the break that would take his career to the next level. In fact, he seemed to confound commercial success with a determination second only to his determination to make his music honest, meaningful, and lasting, like the music of his hero, Hank Williams, and his mentor, the Texas bluesman, Lightning Hopkins. At that, it can be argued, Towns succeeded. When he left this world at age 52 on New Year's Day 1997, 44 years to the day after Hank Williams' death, Towns Van Zandt left behind a solid and lasting body of work as original and as deeply personal, yet as naturally a part of a great tradition and as all-encompassing and universal as any created in 20th century American music, embodied in beautifully realized songs like To Lives to Fly, For the Sake of the Song, Don't You Take It Too Bad, Rex's Blues, Lungs, Nothing, Flying Shoes, Highway Kind, Snowing on Raton, Marie, and of course, Poncho and Lefty and If I Needed You, among many others.